Welcome back to another episode of Terrible Tirades. My name is Sean, and I'm joined by my two good friends, Paul and Adam. What's up? You two can awkwardly say hello now. How's it going? I never know if I'm supposed to say something. Yeah, I, I change it every time, so how could you? <laughs> and by my brother, Dale, who is very excited to tell some of his stories about McDonald's today, as the topic for today's episode is McDonald's, part two, the McComing. Yawn it. Before we get started... I want to do some current events. I know I prefaced that a little bit, but I didn't tell you guys what we were doing this time. I didn't post an article in the Discord, so you have no idea what I'm going to say. I will tell you, though, that it is somewhat relatable to what we're going to be talking about today, just McDonald's. I don't know if you've heard of this. I actually had no idea that this was a thing until Sarah brought it up to my attention no more than three hours ago. Chick fil A will be testing out a new sandwich and the sandwich is a cauliflower fried sandwich. It'll be starting Monday in three cities, Denver, Charleston, South Carolina, and the Greensboro triad region in North Carolina. The sandwich will not be marketed as a vegan option as the recipe still contains milk and eggs. It's not a chicken patty. It's a cauliflower patty fake chicken patty that's the idea a vegetarian it's not though they're they're not gonna market it as a vegan or vegetarian option because they don't have uh vegetarian friendly food making places man that is right in my area too like i am right smack dab in between Charleston, South Carolina and Greensboro, North Carolina. I can't wait to see. And Chick-fil-A is like a religion down here. I don't understand it. It's an okay sandwich. But like way better chicken places are getting passed up so people can go get an overpriced little patty of chicken. It's God's chicken. You know, I got to give them props. Congratulations on being the last business in the world, it seems. It's like, yeah, we're closed on Sunday. We have to go to church. Well, you want us to change? How about uh, we want you to shut up? So it's not even... uh, You said it's not vegan because of milk or something, but it's not even vegetarian? Is there Mm -hmm. like animal fat in the oil? I don't know about that, but they're they're saying that they can't call it vegetarian friendly because they're not going to have an area in their kitchen where they can prepare it that's not oh, okay been tainted by animal carcass i don't know i don't know but they, they can't market it as a vegetarian option excuse me is this cauliflower cruelty free <laughs> you know was this wild sourced cauliflower you, you make that joke i guarantee <laughs> oh i know <laughs> i make this joke in full knowledge We torture the cauliflower. So, is this this is just like for like a health thing? I can't imagine it's even that healthy if it's fried. But I mean, would it be healthier than fried chicken? I have no idea. Um, I if you're gonna put it on bread, I was gonna say that I know a lot of the cauliflower stuff is for the keto diet stuff. Yeah. Like you can make cauliflower pizza. What do you call that? Like the crust is cauliflower. Okay. So that eliminates most of the carbs from a pizza. But if it's going to be a sandwich that you stick between two pieces of regular bread, that doesn't make much sense. Well, it can't, it can't very well be for the taste now, can it? I mean, maybe somebody out there is going to be like, this is better than chicken. But I don't, I think 99% of people are not going to say that. Not here in the Yeehaw South, buddy. So I I think from the article, what I gathered from it is that Chick-fil-A has been trying for the last couple years, like I, like literally two years, playing around with plant-based food options for their menu. And they came up, they, they landed on cauliflower. At least this is according to the article that I read. So take this with whatever grain of salt that you want. It's from CNN.com. Um, that they landed on cauliflower because it 
had its own kind of unique taste that they like. And they played around with chickpeas and all this other kind of stuff. But they landed on cauliflower. No idea. Apparently, it's been in the works for the last two years from their uh, in-house chef or whatever that's uh, responsible for creating new menu items. I have no idea why they landed on it specifically. Chickpeas would have been better because chick feet, peas, chick filet. Yeah. I mean, you know, the play on words is there. Plus, who doesn't like hummus? I wouldn't know. I don't care for hummus. Bro. Hummus is the key to peace in the Middle East. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you get these two sides together. Hey, bro. Have you tried that new Saba brand hummus? You <laughs> <laughs> must pretty good. There you go. That's exactly how they sound you know? in the Middle East, too. If you were wondering That's where all the surfer dudes there. went. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they fled California in the 70s. They're like, yeah, it's just getting like wicked narnar out here and like the bad kind where things are gnarled. Yeah, they're the Taliban now. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay, anyway. So how does this tie into what we're talking about today? Um, so this isn't so much a current event because this happened last year, but I was unaware of it because while I was doing the research on the Chick-fil-A disaster that's about to happen next week, I found that McDonald's did something very similar last year, and I had no idea that this actually happened. So this is the McDonald's McPlant Sandwich. And I have numerous references, but uh, the one that I primarily took from was qsrmagazine.com. I don't know if, have you heard of this? Has anyone heard of that? Not at all. No, I know they did like that, the cactus plant flea market Happy Meal thing, but that was just like some clothing brand shit and you just get a Big Mac. Yeah. So no, this was a legitimate plant-based patty that they came up with for, I believe, to target the vegan audience. Um, So McDonald's launched a pilot menu item, which was aptly named the McPlant Sandwich. Uh, It originally launched in the U.S. February 14th of last year, but the pilot ended on August or in August of 2022 with no plans to continue to keep the menu item in the stores for the U.S. market. Uh, It did not do well, as you may imagine. It did not do well. Mm. Yeah, I don't have, I don't know if I have the cities on the document. No, I don't, which is stupid. I should have. But one of the cities that they launched a pilot program in was in, was in Texas. And I just feel like that was poor placement. (laughs) Yeah. If you're going to launch in select cities for that, you got to think like Seattle. Los Angeles, these types of places. Well, you know, all the Californians are fleeing to Texas. Maybe they were just trying to get ahead of the game. They followed Elon Musk. Also, was that on, uh, they, they released it on Valentine's Day? <laughs> I don't know. If well, they... is, is that one purpose? or? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it was released earlier than that in the UK market, but I, I don't think it fully released in the U S market in their pilot cities, at least until I think it said it, it, it released in 600 stores in the U S February 14th. You, you're just going to like take your date to McDonald's and be like, Hey, uh, you know, me this murder. I want to. I want to prove how much I love you by eating this plant-based uh, McDonald's burger. <laughs> yeah, the weight of my heart is a soggy leaf. <laughs> In patty form. Um, oh, I actually have some of the ingredients. So the McPlant patty is composed of ingredients like peas, rice, and potatoes. It's served on a sesame seed bun with tomato, lettuce, pickles, onions, mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, and a slice of American cheese. Sounds gross. Ugh. I mean, not that McDonald's sounds appetizing to begin with, but the McPlant does not sound like something I want to digest, if I could digest it. Yeah, this is what happens when Bill Gates starts running the McDonald's menu. It sounds like a Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 move. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what that means. So did, did anybody try the Impossible Whopper? 
because that's, you know, I guess you, you have to pick. You're either going to try like a few cities like McDonald's did, or you're just going to roll it out everywhere. And I actually heard from some people that that wasn't bad. I don't know if that's just because of the, the history that that company has with making substitute meat. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. When I was doing the uh, Nativity Fast one year, I just couldn't stand because I didn't know how to cook anything good. So I had to eat something and I'm like, well, this doesn't have meat. So it fits my fasting rules and it was okay. But I just felt, I felt ashamed every time I ate it. Like I was going to start growing little <laughs> vaginas all over my face, you know? Yeah. I, I, I guess I've heard that, like that one was pretty good. And, and I was a thinking about trying it. I'm like, that sounds pretty good. It definitely sounds better than the McPlant or the, the cauliflower one, but then I, but then I also heard that um, that it had so much sodium in it that it really isn't any healthier. So it's really only if you're doing it to be like, you know, not cruel to animals. It's like pretty much the only reason. You know, I noticed when I ate it, I definitely could tell my pulse through my eyeballs. So maybe it has something to do with that sodium. Well, very well, could be. Well, that's the current event for the day. Um, yeah, Chick-fil-A, trying, trying that cauliflower, and then we went back in time a little bit for the McPlant. What a horrible name, too. McPlant. <laughs> yeah, what, uh, the McPlant sandwich. That's what they came up with. The McPlant sounds like a building that's dumping chemicals into like a municipal well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so perfect segue, right? Um, Dale, you weren't here for the last episode of the McDonald's stories right i was so, not i was not i i'm excited to hear what you guys say about it because you worked there a lot longer than i did i think you worked there for an entire year before i even applied mm -hmm. and for several years after i was there like five years first couple years of college and last couple years of high school and even for a year after i dropped out of college for a while you know i had a lot of experience with mcdonald's it was it was my youth it was absolutely my youth. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I miss it a lot sometimes. Like the simplicity of it? The simplicity and, you know, the people we had. I have never worked anywhere that I've encountered that type of people. Just this wild mix of greatly different person. I mean, case in point, all of us here met at McDonald's except for my brother who I met at my mom's house. <laughs> You know, that's where you met me. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's where <laughs> I met you. <laughs> you know, I met the guy that's my roommate. Now I met him at McDonald's. Half of my friends are still people I met at McDonald's 15 years ago. Even in the military, we have, it, it's this, it's a thing where your best friendships are formed in the hardest of times. <laughs> and I, I kind of relate that back to McDonald's a little bit where we, had so stressful like it was such a stressful environment at times and then also there was a lot of downtime where you could build that camaraderie and i think that's probably relatable uh to, even to the military because in military you're go 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 and then you sit there on your ass and you mres for like two days straight and then you go 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 again it's kind of similar to that oh yeah i remember my very first day at the mcdonald's i met uh, jimmy smith the man, the myth, the legend, the spirit of Christmas that still haunts our nightmares. You know, he's a he's a great kid. First day I start there. Keep for a little context, Jimmy, you know, he's as white as a cloud in the summer sky, like but he <laughs> definitely acted black all his life. And something with the way his brain worked was a little off. He, I get to call him a kid even though he was older than me. He was always a kid in his head. First day I meet this kid, I'm walking in and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm Dale. Uh, you know, how's, how's it going? He's like, yeah, dog, today my last day, dog. And I'm like, Jimmy, that's terrible. I just met you. He's like, you know, and then I come in the next day and there's Jimmy Smith again. I'm like, Jimmy, I thought yesterday was your last day. He's like, yeah, dog, today my last day, dog. Every day was his last day for like five years. I think that's how everybody everybody met Jimmy. Like once he saw you in a McDonald's uniform, today my last day. I was like, who are you? I don't even know who you are. 
uh, nice to meet you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, dog. Today's my last day, dog. Like everybody. That was how he introduced himself. Oh, yeah, dude. He had like names for everyone, too. Like I was Del Del. I don't even remember what he called me. <laughs> <laughs> Only nickname I remember having there was from from the manager, Dave. He would just call me Skunk because I guess my hair was like dyed black with like like a blonde streak through it or something. Bro, I remember that now. Yeah, you were skunk for a while. He would just randomly come up to us. Like, he would just like come up to us and like whisper over our shoulder. He'd be like, all we are is dust in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I remember Jimmy once followed our manager, Eric, into the bathroom talking to him, not thinking very clearly, you know, he's just talking. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually gets into the McDonald's bathroom with Eric, and Eric's like, what are you going to do? Shake it for me, Jimmy? And Jimmy <laughs> thought that was such a great joke. He's like, man, you cold-blooded, dog. That's sick, man. You sick. And he gives him a hug <laughs> in like the McDonald's men's room. We're like, Jimmy, that's not helping his case. <laughs> that's the catchphrase I remember. Oh, yeah. You cold-blooded. Everybody was cold-blooded. <laughs> and you definitely didn't want to see him on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he had like his little like he would do some like amateur street rap, like yeah, freestyle and shit. But his brain didn't work right, so it was more like, "Look at me, my name is Jimmy. You don't want to see me on the streets. I'm cold blooded." I like the Steelers. He, oh yeah, he. I, what uh, shocked me about Jimmy more than anything, like any interaction that I ever had with Jimmy. The biggest thing that really shocked me was how much he procreated. Oh yeah. Oh he he smashed. It's, he smashed I, the dumb chicks. I like, couldn't believe it. <laughs> I remember one time he was at Eric's house with us. Eric was our manager and he's he was a good friend of mine after maybe a couple of weeks working there, we just clicked. So I'm hanging out with Eric and Jimmy was there because he would just wander through Westover, you know, with his kids sometimes, other times without. He would just stop and hang out for a while. And he's laying on like this bed they had downstairs playing SNES while we're playing a card game. And I look over and it's just the back shot of Jimmy's profile. I'm like, you know what? He's not like got a bad body. He's tone and stuff. I can see why the dumb chick smash. And then he turns around with his all with his fucked up teeth and his big goofy smile and his bright red nose. I'm like, oh, okay, that's the illusion is gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I know why he had so many kids. I mean, uh, this doesn't talk. This doesn't speak to uh, you know whether or not he was good with picking up the ladies. I guess, but. Uh, somebody asked him if he had ever heard of a condom, and he was like, just don't feel the same, dog. Just don't feel the same. <laughs> I was like, all right, this man's going to have a lot of children. I, well, I, I, it's a total guess, but I feel like it was like five kids at, at a minimum, how many kids he had. I mean, at least he'd heard of a condom. I once worked with a Nigerian dude who absolutely did not believe it when we explained what a condom was. Like he laughed. He's like, "No, no, really, what is it?" And we're like, "No, it's a, it's a thing you put over your your junk so that you don't like shoot it in the belly and get him pregnant." He's like, "That is crazy. You are lying to me right now." <laughs> I love your accents. Dude. I love them. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I feel like we could do a whole episode on stories from Domino's, but I I don't think that anyone. I couldn't relate. I did, yeah, I didn't work there. I don't know too much of there other than they were like, they hooked it up so they could play Call of Duty on the menu boards. Yeah, I do remember doing that. That was wild. But, you know, back to Mickey D's, man. There were just so many characters. Like, yeah. Old Man Bruce. Oh, God, yeah. He always looked sweaty, even before he came in. Yeah. He was just already sweaty. Bruce. I don't. Do I remember Bruce? Oh, you should. You gotta remember, old man Bruce. He was so country when he opened his mouth, you could hear banjos playing in the distance. <laughs> so, for anybody who never met Bruce, imagine uh, kind of like a rough-looking. I'm gonna say early to mid '60s man with a black, slowly graying mullet 
and a large mustache hmm. who would sometimes sleep in his 20 year old pickup truck in the parking lot between <laughs> shifts rather than go home, which I never understood until I went to his home. That was a dark day for both of us. Literally dark. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just talk about that now? I think, yeah, I think that's probably appropriate. Uh, yeah. So we just, we go with this other guy who's like, he had just started. I think it was like his first day. Right. Do we actually work with uh, Ryan? Yeah, that's why I okay. think that's why we were there. Yeah, it was like you had just come up to Morgantown, and it was like his first day. Yeah, and we were like, we we want to go, you know, do some fun stuff after work. And he's like, I know where the fun stuff is. Come with me. <laughs> so we went to Bruce's house. And we go there because he's like what dating his daughter or something. Yeah, I think they were engaged. I'm not sure. Wait, well, well, uh, back up. Who is dating whose daughter? Sorry. The this new guy who was uh, started around the same time as Paul. His name was Ryan. Okay. Yeah, he's like a like a aspiring musician or singer songwriter. Uh, he likes to do like all the shit, kind of like in the style of Nickelback. You know, one of the the most mediocre bands of all time. Perfect. But yeah, it's just straight up Nickelback lyrics and. Uh, you know, I think he wanted Adam to play guitar for him because he just was like, oh, you have a guitar. That means you're good and you're exactly who I want to meet. Um, this sounds like something the spawn of Bruce would say. Well, no, this is, he was dating Bruce's daughter. Yeah. Uh, he was trying to get into that. Yeah, yeah. he. But anyways, we went with him to Bruce's house, a place I never thought I would be. Yeah, um, I'm not even sure if we knew it was Bruce's house before we got there. But I think we, yeah, we just went there and there was Bruce. He like, was like, "This is where I'm staying," and we we're like, "Oh, this is this is Bruce's house." Okay, yeah. like Bruce, he's he's a crazy guy. He looks like to me. I think like you know who Yanni is. Yanni. He looks like him if he did meth. <laughs> That's <or> true. <laughs> <laughs> so he we, been, he could have been a great pianist at one point. We never would have known it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're there. We're like, oh yeah, we're just gonna have a fun time hanging out here till, till you know the the party arrives and uh, party never arrived. Yeah, yeah, they didn't they didn't arrive and and somebody didn't pay the, the electric bill for probably a long time and so we're just there sitting at like at candlelight playing some Scrabble for like probably two or three hours. Yeah. Until Gosh. like eventually we're just like, uh, okay, this is terrible. What the fuck is going on? Enough is enough. We just we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so we drove him home, uh, which at that point he revealed to us uh, that the reason he hadn't been at McDonald's for so long was that he was in prison in Ohio and that he had. Uh, what what did he say to us? Something about like that's where he met his brothers. And I was like, "What? Oh, your, your brother is there too?" And he's like, "No, my brothers, my Aryan Nation brothers." <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "Oh, okay. <laughs> so where do you live again? Let's uh, we, we gotta get home." <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, this explains all the slurs in that Scrabble game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All coming yeah, together. The, oh god, yeah. I, I I feel like Adam just like picks up on all this shit because like we're always retelling all these old stories and he just like says some like off the wall shit that I don't even remember. I think I just like tune out a lot of it. Like I'm not. Yeah, that, that was like I think had I uh, taken him up on the offer to write his Nickelback songs, like half of them would have been about gang pride. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure, yeah, but that dodged a bullet there. But. uh <laughs> Regarding Bruce, yeah, it was just, it was kind of sad to see that that was Bruce's life because it was like, we kind of, we briefly saw like his wife and some of his other kids. I think he had like three or four kids and uh, I'm pretty sure that she didn't work and it was just like, 
he was there working like 80 hours a week sleeping in his truck and then he's bringing home a check to her and she's i don't know what she's doing with it but not a uh apparently can't save enough to pay the electric bill yeah yeah so. bruce was a, a good guy like he yeah he, he he was definitely a hard worker nobody could say that about them and like just like seeing his face when we were there like you could almost see like he felt like embarrassed just like you know i work hard and, and my family deserves better than this but this is what happens mm. yeah take note kids this is what happens when you can't read in the modern world do you guys remember that bruce was illiterate I did not know that. Another oh. illiterate McDonald's worker? Because that <laughs> yeah. was something, that was a theme of the last episode. <laughs> yeah, Scoop, our, our old neighbor Scoop, he could not yeah. read. Oh, yeah, I guess he didn't work at McDonald's. But. Yeah, maybe it's a West Virginia thing. But, uh, yeah. yeah, he just memorized <laughs> the shape of the sandwich names on the screen. So he would oh, see wow. the shape and be like, oh, that means McChicken, which is why he never <laughs> once got the special instructions right. He would just ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> because he couldn't read them. Huh. That explains why he was usually the one cleaning the grill. I remember one time I come out uh, to make, I think, salads or something. So I'm setting the prep table up. And Eric, the manager, comes walking up behind me and he whispers in my ear. Because Bruce always did the bu- or the burritos. Bruce always made the burritos like six hours earlier than you're supposed to be allowed to make the burritos for temp reasons. And just put them in. He would make them as breakfast the previous day was ending. Oh, my. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. And Eric comes up and whispers in my ear. He's like, don't eat the burritos tomorrow. There's pee in them. Because <laughs> Bruce goes to the bathroom and doesn't wash his hands because he doesn't believe in germs. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, those, those burritos are pretty nasty anyway. So I yeah. think if you're eating them, you, you pretty much don't care. Like, and I hated making those things. So, so I'm, I'm super happy when Bruce was there that day. It made my life a lot better. But if you drop like the sausage out of those burritos, they like bounce like five feet in the air. Like they are not normal <laughs> sausages. Well, they don't even have those anymore. Well, they have breakfast burritos, but they don't have the, the ones that you make, it's all like microwaved now, I think. What? They don't have the ones with the rubber cement sausages anymore? They don't have, like, you don't make them anymore. You don't prepare them the night before. It's just stuff that you get out of a box and throw in a microwave. Bro, do you remember when we used to make our own uh, biscuits for the morning shift? Like, mix the buttermilk and the flour and stuff? Oh, yeah. I, I had to do that many, many times, like, because I would come in at, like, 10 at night and they would have me make all the biscuits for the next day which is pretty terrible but at least I wasn't washing the dishes I guess <laughs> yeah you had issues with the dishwashing didn't you oh uh, yeah we we talked about that last one like carrying that whole big fucking fry thing out and like just you would spray it and it would just get everywhere so you like no matter what you did <laughs> you were covered in salt and water it's a theme Right, so uh, we're starting to roll into it. The theme of making or improperly making the food or just food that's just made horribly. And my little short story on that is when I realized how the sweet tea was made for McDonald's. (laughs) If anyone doesn't understand, right, uh, there's a lot of people that swear that McDonald's has the best sweet tea ever. I'm gonna I'm gonna beg to differ there. You at least got to get that like hat. And the person you ordered this from is probably gonna be pissed, but I get it. Like half unsweet mixed with half sweet. You know, you want it half and half because for every tea bag you put in there, which they're big tea bags, they like have their own special custom like five by five tea bag that you stick in there. But for every bucket that you make with one of those, you have to put a pound of sugar in. An entire bag. An entire (laughs) bag of sugar. You just tear it open and pour that entire bag of sugar into the thing. And whenever he says bucket, he literally means a red bucket that barely gets washed. It just has crusted, dried sugar in it. And it's it's disgusting. And that, that is... Your sweet tea that you love so much, Americans, looking at you. 
Yeah, the taste comes from that seed sugar that's been there from the founding of McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember washing, I say air quotes, washing the sweet tea bucket because the, uh, you think about the McDonald's menu, there are things that uh, are served during breakfast and then you have lunch. Most rotate out. There are some things that are served all day and one of them is a sweet tea and the people rarely ever stop ordering it so when you had to clean that it was like okay we're in like the biggest lull of the day usually right after lunch or uh you know yeah right after lunch like 12 one o'clock they're like okay nobody's gonna order one for a while so you go back there and you grab it but you only have like 10 or 15 minutes to clean it so you're just like spraying it out trying to get all the stuff but it's too big to fit in the sink so that's all you can do is spray it you spray it and you try to melt all the sugar and then when it looks good enough and there's only a small brown stain at the bottom you put it back and they fill it up again i know with with cleaning it like it would it would go so long it would like get this like almost like fermented taste and a lot of times you would either have that like, nasty fermented taste. You're like, I'm going to get drunk off of this fucking tea or something. <laughs> or they would clean it right before you would get it and they never rinse it good. So then it tastes like fucking soap. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. You probably won't have kids now. <laughs> so we have the sweet tea incidents and it directly ties into another horrible uh, I, I either it was a manufacturer defect or it was just McDonald's showing how wonderful they are at ordering uh, custom making uh, equipment. But it was whenever they first started a coffee bar in the store that we worked at in West Virginia, the, they just installed this coffee bar. So the idea was that we could make these frappuccinos and so on. And they had this really expensive looking frappuccino machine and, the only real thing that we had to do with that machine was in the bottom, there was a, a cabinet door that you could open and you would put the flavoring or the mixes in and you make sure that it was connected and we would make sure that it was topped off with ice. And probably a week after it being installed and being used, I'm filling it up with ice because I noticed that it's low and I tried to keep it topped off because I didn't want to it to run out and then I'd be behind or anything. Right. So I'd keep it topped off. But then I realized that some of the ice, whenever it would drop down, didn't like, didn't look right and didn't sound right when it got blended up. And I was really confused by it. And I ended up putting the glove on and dug my hand into where the ice was and started pulling out chunks of plastic, clear plastic that was in there that looked identical to ice and i had no idea how many drinks that had been served <laughs> with that plastic was was this uh hard plastic like tupperware or soft plastic like that you get like on a like wrapping for something no hard plastic like imagine uh harder than like a tupperware but basically like the container of like what you would see the ice through or what held the ice, that kind of material, but finely chopped up looking like little tiny bits of ice. I wonder if there was some kind of guard on the blades that no one took off and just started using the machine and it just ate through the guard. It's possible, but imagine how long that had been there. And, and then when I, I don't remember who was on shift what manager it was, but I remember I was like, Hey, uh, this, and I like just showed them what it was and explained it to them. And they're like, okay, we'll clean it out and keep using it. Don't worry about it. And they just kept fucking <laughs> using it. <laughs> no, they don't did. Worry about it. They kept using it. They, they're like, Oh, it's, I don't see anymore. We cleaned it out. It's fucking, it's fine. Like, it's not fine. <laughs> like That's not okay. <laughs> wow. I don't remember who that was. Speaking of busted machines, I have a story that explains many things. I think our, our listeners are going to want to hear this one. 
But in order to get into that story, I need to briefly explain who Brian Kelly, our maintenance man, is because we discovered something about the shake machine together oh. that <laughs> that is a very interesting story. So Brian Kelly was our maintenance man, and he, oh boy, he was a trip. I think he had like an engineering degree in something, but he had like a sleeping disorder and he couldn't make the engineering schedule work. And I found out that he actually was a veteran from the Navy. Was he really? Yeah, he told me that whenever I was trying to enlist, that oh. he was a veteran. How about that? I mean, he's a great guy. And uh, when I would trans, when I was transitioning to work up front for a while, instead of just being like the grill troll, which is definitely where I was, and I was the grill goblin. Uh, so they had me transitioning up front and I would keep getting questions. Well, why is your shake machine down? Why is your shake machine down? So one day I'm like, screw it. I'm going to talk with Brian Kelly. I'm going to learn how to clean this thing myself so that I make sure it is definitely cleaned every day or at least how frequently it's supposed to so that it never goes down. So we're both looking for the manual and we find this manual that is a really old one, but it's for the same type of machine and it seems to still work. There are secret menus that they don't teach you how to use unless you happen to be the maintenance man with this specific manual. Secret menus on that machine that you have to go through in order to fix it right. So that the average worker is just literally incapable of making the machine work properly. And we realized, oh, this is because they have a really expensive repair uh, contract with the producer of that machine so that it goes down frequently and they have to send their really expensive technician in so that McDonald's can feed them money, you know, and up the demand for their shakes or something. I forget how McDonald's benefits from this. After we found that manual, we were asked to turn it in turn so it that in. we couldn't do it anymore. They're like, your machine is working too much. We have to be paid, like we have a contract. We have to have the technician out this often or we're in violation. So we just hid the manual and kept doing it right anyway. They were not thrilled with us. What? Yeah. It's like an actual conspiracy. Ronald's on his way to your house right now. He's <laughs> right like, now. Fuck the manual. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put this information out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brian Kelly was a trip, too. I remember we had this African woman, Madba, that worked with us. Anyone else remember Madba? I forgot I about her. She was do. a sweetheart. Oh, she was great. She was another degree holder working at McDonald's. And they would get into it hard. There was, one day, the pa- <laughs> there was one day the power went out for like maybe 10 seconds. And we're all cheering because we're like, yes, the power's out. We can go home. And then it comes back on. In that 10 seconds, Brian Kelly has positioned himself behind Modba, taken off his shirt, and is just standing there with this really lecherous smile on. <laughs> like, re- like uncomfortably close to her. I completely forgot about Modba entirely. Um, but now that you brought her up, I have these flood of memories coming back. And yeah, her and Brian Kelly used to get into these huge arguments. I used to... <laughs> Even back then, I said this stupid dad joke, like, you guys sound like a married couple. And she would go off on, like, she hated it. She hated him, like, legitimately hated him. So when you say, like, shirtless, like, no no undershirt, no nothing, he's just, like, standing there with his nipples out or what? Yeah, hairy tits and everything. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's super weird. <laughs> it only took 10 seconds. It was really impressive, honestly. <laughs> like, he whipped that thing off and no one noticed. Is this whenever McDonald's had the, the button-up shirts still? Oh, yeah. I remember I went my entire junior year of high school wearing my McDonald's uniform to school because I didn't want to have to carry two sets of clothes and try to fit them in that tiny little locker we got. Hmm. So I had like the button-up shirt tucked in with the stupid grease-stained tie. You know? I hate that tie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot about the ties. Oh, yeah. That's where I learned to tie one. Was that the entire time that I worked there? I can't remember. I feel like it went away, but I, I'm not sure. Um, the tie thing eventually went away, and like we, I think most McDonald's did not wear them because I've worked at actually 
I think two or three McDonald's now. I don't know why I can't remember right now, but I, I got fired from my, I got fired from two McDonald's. This day. Yeah. <laughs> One, cause I, I didn't want to cut my hair and the manager like had like, she had like super short, like curly hair. And I think she was just mad that my hair was longer than hers. So she was just like, your hair is not above your color. You're fired. Okay. Jeez. That's weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, she was, she was insane. Um, I forgot what I was. Uh, I, for, I forgot what I was talking about. Something about completely. the ties. Oh yeah, the ties. Yeah, like I, I thought it was like because we were like the corporate McDonald's or something, and like we were one of the few that had to wear them, but we also got paid slightly more than some of the other hmm. McDonald's. I remember that. Um, what, but something you just said reminded me about like the grooming. Uh, we had the. I don't. I don't think they do this anymore, but. The grooming was like tightly enforced during the time that I was there. I remember one day I showed up with a five o'clock shadow, um, probably about like what I have on now, you know, just like maybe two days worth of beard growth. And they were like, no, can't do that. Here's a disposable razor. Go in the bathroom, clean yourself up no. or else you can't clock in. I was like, wow, going to take it that far. Okay. They definitely made me do that at the first one I worked at. I can't remember that much. At the one we all worked at together, we had to all shave, I guess. maybe. I know you can have a mustache, yeah. at least. Only a mustache. Yeah, they were very strict about that. It says a lot about a company when they keep a disposable razor and some Barbasol in a drawer, you know, just waiting to catch you out. They did, didn't they, in the manager's office. I forgot about mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. It's always going to be like the fucking one one single blade razor that's like been used so many times and it's fucking rusty. Oh yeah, it was horrible. I I had to use it that one time and I cut myself with it cuz it was like, you know, cheap dollar store crap. We're coming we're we're getting closer to the end um of this episode already. It doesn't seem like we would be, right? But we're it says we've been recording for 50 minutes, but I'm pretty sure that's more more towards like 45 because I started it early. But I've been taking some notes, <laughs> and I, I, I'm i very interested on how many, because I brought it up in, in, in the beginning of the episode, uh, how similar some of the things you hear about McDonald's, at least our stories, are with the Army. And I've taken some notes, and so far I have. Hardships build friendships, which is very obvious. And then shitty McNicknames. That's astonishing because, you know, the Army, you get all these nicknames all the time. A very large demographic of people. You have that. The old manuals for modern equipment. The Army is famous for that. We have, uh, I not too long ago, was laying out a tent with... Um, the manual for the tent that was supposed to tell you all this like tiny little parts of it and everything, all of it was just pictures of men setting up the pe- the tent, and it was in like Vietnam. Uh, that was the manual. It has not been updated since, uh, and we still use it. That same tent, it's still there, um, along with dumb maintenance contracts that cost ridiculous amount of money. That's something that the army is very famous for. It's spending a ton of money on dumb contracts that they don't need and ridiculous hair and stand or hair and grooming standards. The army is great on that one too. So I'm, you guys are basically ready to enlist. Just saying you're there. Why would we have to enlist? We're already veterans of Viet Donald's. You know? I mean, I definitely shed a lot of blood in McDonald's. That was for sure. I don't know how much blood I did, but. I definitely got burnt on the grill, with, either by grease burns or just burning in, on the grill in general. Oh, yeah. I remember when they opened that one, they opened a McDonald's right next to the student housing for West Virginia University, and I happened to get drafted in to opening that store. It was like a 14-hour shift, and they wouldn't let me get water, <laughs> and it was like 110 degrees in there. I didn't get a break either. So by the end of it, I was so dehydrated. My lips had cracked and there was just blood pouring down my face. And I'm like, can I get water now? (laughs) And their answer was no. No, their answer was, here's a six ounce cup of water. It's like, no, (laughs) I need water. 
All right. Well, we've been bantering back and forth now for about 50 minutes. So we'll try to get some more actual guided stories before we hop off. Paul, do you have anything that you left out of the last episode that you want to jump into this one with? Yeah, I think I had several things bouncing around my head and I should have wrote a few of them down, but I can only remember a couple right now. And and I don't know how I didn't tell the last one, uh, tell the one in the last episode, because I know I was already ranting about like how, you know, night shift would get like all of the breakfast dishes. Like I would be like, why am I cleaning the the egg cooker right now? I think you all know when eggs are made and, um, <laughs> you know, they've been sitting here for only like 12 hours, but you know, whatever. So it was just that shit all the time. And then one day it was just like, I just had enough, you know, I, I, I was just pissed about doing all these leftover dishes and, and it was during the times when we were doing McRibs, which apparently that's never happening again, but it probably will still, they, they Probably like one of those things they just say, oh, McRibs are going away forever just to make it that much more epic when it comes back again in 10 years or whatever. But anyways, all these McRib trays, which granted they are a lunchtime food, but I didn't want to clean them. They were crusty, nasty barbecue sauce coated trays with bits of rib in them, which I don't believe they're real ribs they are kind of rubbery. Those were the worst trays because <laughs> most of the trays you would just put meat in and like around the bottom of it, it would accumulate sauce from the meat. But those trays were purposefully lined with sauce. You poured the <laughs> sauce into the tray and it stayed there in the heater all day. Like that's not for cleaning. For those who are uninitiated, McDonald's just has like a heating cabinet that all the trays are put into. And I mean, it's so part of yeah. the menu that when the beef comes off of the grill, it's not all the way cooked because they know it's going to cook the rest of the way in those heating cabinets. So it's like a, a significant amount of heat. When you have a tray full of barbecue, just baking <laughs> in there for like six hours, we're not saying it was kept in there and it's mildly warm for 20 minutes. We're like six hours in and there's crusty film of barbecue that you now have to scrape off. Disgusting. Uh, and if you tune into the last episode of McDonald's, I think I started with that exact description about how I, that's why I ended up punching Gerald in the face because he, the timer thing on the heaters when they come off the grill. It's those heated moments, like getting hit in the face with a McChicken that that uh, form the best friendships. The going best. back to what you said at the beginning, right? The hardships build friendships. Uh, <laughs> maybe not always. <laughs> so you were um, talking about cleaning those uh, trays out, Paul. Yeah. Anyways, back to the McRib trays, and, and thank you, Adam and Dale, for elaborating on just how disgusting those get. So. I, I just, I was just like, fuck this. I'm having a shitty day. Um, the McDonald's that we worked in had drop ceilings. So I just lifted up one of the ceiling tiles and just started, I trucked like one or two McRib trays up in there. And I'm just like, yeah, I ain't watching this shit. And that was there for years. Cause like two years later, they had to redo the ceilings cause of a leak. And we pulled down one of those. It was years after you left. And we pull down one of those panels and just a bunch of dishes <laughs> fall down <laughs> that have just been up there rotting for years. And the smell was so bad back there, no one noticed. There's there's no way they rotted, though, because of how processed that all that is. There's no way. Yeah, but the barbecue, man, it's just solid sugar. Yeah. Like everything at McDonald's <laughs> that isn't beef. Didn't someone say that, like, Brian Kelly was the one who found them, actually? Yeah, he was. Well, because he was <laughs> the maintenance man. He was redoing the ceiling tiles. Yeah. I'm sure he was pissed. <laughs> yeah, they knocked him off his ladder and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I know. I was talking about the the butterfly effect last time. Like, I, I could have really fucked up his life. Yeah. Unknowingly there. Okay, Hopefully so not. what is this vampire story that you have? I'm not familiar with it. 
I think Adam. I think Adam oh, should I, know this guy. I think I remember the vampire. He, he eventually became a, a an employee, other than oh, just yeah. a person of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we talking about Murphy? Uh, Alan. Oh, Alan. Okay, this I don't guy, know. Alan. Like he would just hang out in the lobby even before he worked there. He was just like always hanging out in the lobby. I think he'd be on like his laptop or something there. Who knows what the fuck he was searching on our Mic Wi Fi. <laughs> um, but uh, he, he he wore like a big leather black trench coat oh, I and like some this guy like now. sunglasses. Yep. Like even if it was night, he was he was wearing sunglasses, just like the song. Um, and he had the, the like um, the slick back, slick back, black, mm. greasy ponytail, hair. little tight ponytail. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was one of those people with greasy enough hair. He didn't need any gel. He made his own. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much. And uh, this guy, he was actually the the older brother of this guy that I went to church with, who would be, become an estranged. Uh, is that is that the right word for it? Um, so I never met him back when I went to church. But his his brother was strange too. I mean, he was cool as fuck. But he wrote like a, a like an actual church song about squids that we sang in church. It was like, <laughs> "Oh, colossal squid, won't you wrap us in your tentacles of God's mass creation?" <laughs> No lie, we sang that in church. Oh, it that's was great. It was the weirdest shit, and it was the best church song ever, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> they eventually changed the lyrics into something a little bit more scriptural. <laughs> uh, another guy helped him like change him. He's like, okay, a little bit less squid, a little bit more loving arms. Was it the Nickelback uh, guy from McDonald's that came in and helped you write it? Yeah, I mean, a lot of church songs are kind of Nickelback like, right? Yeah, the, the racist Nickelback guy. Yeah. Look at this swastika. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No. Um, anyways, yeah, crazy. So b- both of the brothers are a little odd, but but I like the younger one a little bit more. Um, but this guy, he eventually kind of, you know, we sort of became friends-ish. I mean, I think it was more like he wanted to be our friend. And... Uh, he 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 talked with was uh the 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 gesture of genocide a lot as you you all know that guy uh, or, or his many names uh yeah the joker yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. zach <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's stop uh, beating around that bush here all right yeah yeah so he he kind of like started hanging out with zach a good bit well he'd hang out with me and zach adam was there too uh, but adam <laughs> adam kept to himself a lot but we, we would hang out a lot and uh, Zach started showing him like some cradle of filth music videos. And I just remember him. He would just like, he would just like want to watch them over and over again. He'd be like, Oh, that that's, that's fucking cool. <laughs> like, like almost like a, like a Gothic Beavis and butthead. Like, <laughs> wow, that was, that was really cool. <laughs> Let's watch that again. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but hey, Zach. <laughs> You know, he was also a uh, friend with Gerald, and you know, he liked to. Uh, I think that was a reason for his his visit. A lot of times was uh, the Gerald, and you know, he didn't always want to give as much as he he took. And uh, I think things eventually became kind of weird. And then he would just like randomly show up, and he'd be all pissed off, and we would just kind of ignore him and not answer the door anymore. <laughs> As you do. I hate that I picked the name Gerald for the first for the guy that I got into that Mick fight with. Yeah, you confused me a little with that one. I know, and I, I hate that I freaking chose that name. It was just the first name that came to mind, and I, of course it is. Well, yeah. Talking about McDonald's, of course that's the first name that came to mind. So anybody that's listening still, if you're still here, uh, <laughs> the the Gerald that Paul was just referencing is not the Gerald that I punched in the face. Just I wanted to clarify. Yeah, that. this Gerald has a different kind of face. Yeah, this Gerald is a clever euphemism. Yeah, I, I mean, what what fun is a podcast without a few inside jokes here and there to make people think? I mean, I'm pretty sure most people can draw their own conclusions and figure out exactly who at least one of these Gerald characters is. Probably. 
this is going to become part of tirades lore. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the other day, uh, not that we have a fan base at all, but <laughs> if, if <laughs> just for us, because I thought it'd be cool. Um, I might make or order some. Uh, the military love loves these things called challenge coins, and it's just a big coin with an emblem of your unit or whatever. I was thinking about making one with the terrible tirades logo on it and having them made and sending them to you guys. If that's something oh, yeah. that you guys would like. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I was worried you were going to say we had to start like an OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, how am I going to sell my bathwater otherwise? You know, <laughs> I have all these old socks that are just going to get thrown out with no return. I bottled up all this hair grease that I can sell. <laughs> okay. Um, I got a stinky couch cushion. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you, if you, do you have any other uh, story? I, I, I'm off base with my recording time because I started recording earlier than what we actually started at. So I think we have about five minutes left in the episode. Um, I mean, not really. Five minutes isn't enough time to get into like Randy. I don't think. Ooh, Randy. Um, we can go Randy. over just I a guess... little bit. We can go over a little bit for Randy. Come on. <laughs> what can we say about Randy? He loved uh, vodka. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big fan of vodka. Yeah, vodka, trash yeah. corral vodka. He was sponsored by vodka. Yeah. If yeah. only they paid for those kidneys he needed, you know, it could have been perfect. He did yeah. have a transplant, didn't he? Or who, was he on the list? Uh, I know he was on dialysis for a while. I, oh, God, that stuff's bad. Pretty sure mm-hmm. he needed a transplant. I'm not sure if he ever got it. I remember, yeah. I, I'll not forget, uh, there was a time he was working the front register and passed out. Oh, no. And it was because he had the kidney issues. And his answer was, well, first he asked, and they initially said no, that he couldn't, but he asked to work the uh, back drive through because that's where he always worked because he could sit down mm-hmm. and they wouldn't let him. And then he pulled out a little thing of vodka and drank and then started working again <laughs> yeah. in front. I was like, oh my gosh. Heaven withdraws. So, uh, for anybody who didn't know Randy, he was like an older guy. I think, uh, but most of the time we knew him, he would have been in like his fifties. Yeah. He was in his fifties. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. he was really nice. He was the, uh, probably like one of the nicest, most happy people who worked there. Really. He would always be joking and talking mm-hmm. with everybody. And I never understood that. Uh, until the one night when we went outside and I saw like the the big bottle of vodka in the trash <laughs> near the dumpster, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay, it's, yeah, that makes more sense now." And he wasn't afraid to show that he was a drunk. He like he didn't usually like you know you wouldn't like he, he didn't mess anything up. He wasn't like sloppy, you know. Yeah, and it has a lot to do with the fact that he was. He had a high tolerance. Right. He, mm-hmm. he was a very functional drunk. I don't think anybody cared either, really, because he was functional. If he was, like, tripping around everybody and just, like, messing everything up, he would have been fired for, like, really quickly. But he was functional. He could work. He could work at McDonald's and not, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think if anyone at a McDonald's cared, you know, with the cast of, you know, rejects and misfits that we were, I don't think anyone had a leg to stand on to say anything to Randy, especially with him being so nice. He was such a good guy. Oh, yeah. I would give him rides home every night, and I think he walked there every day unless he was lucky (laughs) enough to get a ride in. But he would get off at the same time that we did, so I would give him a ride home. He essentially lived like across the street from us at that time. Yeah, he was just behind the circle. Okay. I yeah. I remember I gave him a ride a couple times. He lived with someone else that worked at McDonald's too. I can't remember who. Oh, I thought it was his son. I maybe thought it was his wrong. son too. Yeah. Well, maybe I, I was only in his house one time. I I can't remember oh, who I mean, he lived with. I just know there was a bunch of stairs that me and Ron, like we I gave him my old TV once I got a like a like a thinner one. I gave him like my very first ever HD. TV, which was like a tube TV still, and it was like 200 pounds easy. 
me and Ron had to carry it up like his big ass flight of stairs. I we speak like he was like he's passed. I have no idea. I have no idea where Randy is. It's today. hard to tell because I mean yeah. we knew him. He was in his like mid late fifties, and that was what at least ten years ago. The last anyone saw him yeah, thirteen yeah. thirteen, and he was on dialysis at the time. And we don't know if he got the transplant. So. Odds are good that he <laughs> is no longer among us. And if he is, and he's listening by some miracle of God, Randy, we th- we think of you fondly still. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. But, uh, so I guess we did have time to get into Randy, but there, <laughs> I think uh, we should probably wrap up the, uh, the story of the Nickelback guy, because unfortunately that was not the last time that we saw him. Oh. oh my! Uh, he didn't work mm. there very long. I don't remember. I don't think he did. But he was. He became roommates with someone else who did work there for a while. So we saw him off and on. We went to his place a couple times until he went away for a while. But uh, what did he go on tour with his music group or something? Uh, no, I believe he went back to prison. <laughs> So Same yeah, difference. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, the best part is one day, I think it was around the time that I got fired. I was like at that time sleeping in really late. I it was like two p.m., so it wasn't unreasonable time to knock on somebody's door. But he came and knocked on the door, and he woke me up because I was asleep then. And he had sunglasses on, and I hadn't seen him in like six months. And all he said to me was like, you tell everybody that Ryan, his last name, is back in town, and I'm going to be seeing them all. Oh, man. Serious, like a kind of a threat? I don't know. (laughs) And I was like, all right, man, whatever. And I closed the door. And that was the last time I saw him in my entire life. <laughs> what, like he thought you were uh, the the hype man for some group of, of ne'er-do-wells that he was going to take down? Like, <laughs> you let Big Jim know that I'm back in town. Well, he knew that I knew, like, you know, I was a connection to most of the friend group. And I, I'm guessing that I was the only one he had a chance to talk to fresh out of prison without a phone, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I definitely vaguely remember that day, but I like if that was a threat, I'm not sure why because I feel like you were probably nicer to him than than like me or Ron or anybody else was. Yeah, no, I don't think it was directed at me. If yeah. it was, I think he really, he, it might have just been the way that he was talking and he wanted everybody to know that he was back and ready to hang out again. <laughs> and we were like, yeah, I don't think so. I, yeah, I, I, what I gather from that is that he liked Adam. And he's like, all right, dude, um, if you hear pumped up kicks, I need you to run the other way. That's, that's kind of, <laughs> kind of how I took that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he he might have gone right back in because we never saw him again after that. We could probably Google him after this and pull up his arrest record and see. He's probably oh, listed yeah, that's, somewhere. That's probably that's true. true. That's was just he public. still friends with Dave at that point? Uh, I don't know. Because that was before he went away it was when he lived with Dave. Oh, okay. All right. I think we need to wrap it up now. Um, I'm going to try to do better at when I post these things putting in show notes i didn't even i've never even considered that um someone brought that up to my attention and who knows maybe if we find a mug shot of this guy maybe i'll link that in there we'll, we'll figure it out but hey listen thanks everyone for coming out and uh recording tonight i had a ton of fun if you're still listening to us banter then hopefully you found some part of this episode enjoyable so why not support us by following the podcast to stay up to date for our next episode we don't have a topic yet picked out, but it's hopefully going to be just as fun as this one was. If you did enjoy it, you can find us on YouTube where you can watch little clips that's been edited or the entire episode again if you want. I don't really care. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and even Substack, which I didn't know existed until very recently. I, I'm on there now. Uh, terrible tirades podcast is. 
So thank you all for joining us. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next episode.